In this question, we're given a Fourier pair and we're asked for the Fourier transform of this time domain signal. We notice that the time domain signal looks very much like this frequency domain signal. So maybe we can start by sketching the, the signals to see what we're looking at. So this is our time domain signal. This is the double-sided exponential. So we have a decaying exponential and its Fourier transform 2a over alpha squared plus omega squared would look something like this, where this axis is frequency, and when omega equals zero, we'd have 2 alpha over alpha squared, so a maximum value of 2 over alpha. And here the maximum value will be 1. And the question is, find the Fourier transform of that. So that looks very much similar to that. So what they're asking for is if we had something in the time domain that looked like that. So that would be 1 over b squared, the maximum value. And the question is, what's the Fourier transform of that? So I guess we know from the duality property that the answer will look like a double-sided exponential. We know that, but I guess we'd need to know that amplitude and we'd need to know the actual formula for that. So we'll be using the duality property of the Fourier transform. Let's get this out of the way. So, using the duality property, let's just write that. Duality, that's the symmetry property. We know that e to the minus, or let's write it the other way around. We know that two alpha over alpha squared plus, now instead of writing um, omega squared, I'm going to write t squared because um, the function they're asking about is a function of t. So I'm going to say plus t squared. That corresponds to the same function there, the double-sided exponential. So it's e to the minus alpha and I'm going to put an omega here. So I flipped this. I've written this backwards. That's what duality is about. It's the symmetry property. So I've changed, I've interchanged time and frequency with two important differences. One is there's going to be a minus sign there, and the other is a factor of 2 pi there. So actually, they're, they're minor differences, but they affect the final result. So you will notice that the absolute value will remove the effect of the negative sign. So does this look anything like that? Well, it does, except the numerator, we have a 2 alpha. So alpha is just a variable. I can change alpha to b then it would look slightly more similar. So how about this? 2b over b squared plus t squared. That corresponds to 2 pi times e to the minus b. I'll get rid of the minus sign. So we still have the problem of 2b in the numerator. What we're looking for is a 1 in the numerator. So the easy way to get rid of that is simply to divide by 2b. And if you do that in the time domain, you need to do the same thing in the frequency domain. So I've divided by 2b. So my final result, that cancels with that, that cancels with that. So you'll have 1 over b squared plus t squared. And that's the, the, the question, the expression in the question. And that corresponds to pi over b times e to the minus b absolute value of omega. 
And now we know that the um, amplitude in the original question, remember we were talking about the, uh, the value here, so that value there is pi over b. And this is our final answer.